Please be seated. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, at the beginning of this new year, we celebrate a special feast today, the holy name of Jesus. This Sunday, after the octave of the Nativity, the holy name of our Savior, the name given to our Lord by the angel before he was conceived in the womb of his mother, a name given to our Lord by God, the Father, since all eternity, the Son, in fact, was predestined to become in the fullness of time our Savior, Jesus, Yeshua, God is salvation. And we rejoice today in uh, praising this holy name, a name in which there is salvation, or better, we should say a name which is itself salvation. With the Latins, we can also say nomen est omen. That is, the name is a sign, expresses what the person looks like. Jesus is himself salvation. As we reflect on this feast and on the meaning of the feast, the centrality of Christ and his mystery of salvation, we are also called to reflect on the mystery of redemption, which is the salvation that Christ brought about. But as we reflect on this mystery, salvation, we are a little bit puzzled in our days, because as we see, especially in these last years, Salvation is a word which is quite ambiguous, has become something uh, ambiguous because on the one hand, we are uh, afraid in some way to speak of Christ as the only savior who brought about the salvation of all mankind because we fear to offend those who are not Christians and to be inopportune in, uh, and uh, intolerant. But on the other hand, salvation, the word, has been taken by some other people to say something completely different. For example, we are very used nowadays to speak of the salvation of the planet, isn't it? The salvation of the earth. The salvation of the rainforest, the Amazon rainforest, the lung of humanity. But if salvation is all this, what is therefore salvation? Are we still understanding this word in Latin salus, salutis, as a supernatural concept expressing the very core of our faith, of our being here, adoring the name of Christ. In this very confused moment, when people are trying to take from a religious context something to uh, make it completely secularized and to express the right opposite of what we believe and express, it is necessary that we clarify for ourselves what salvation is. It is a big challenge, but it is opportune that we clarify what salvation is, because the risk is always to uh, undermine its meaning and to simply see salvation as something very human. Jesus as the savior of man from his condition, a condition of poverty, a condition of uh, uh, decadence, but everything understood on a social level. 
This is a big threat to the mystery of Christ. Salvation is supernatural. Salvation is the possibility uh, to be with Christ, uh, the, the possibility to be delivered from this condition, but to be with God for eternity, to be rescued from this condition of sin and decay caused not by the pollution, but by sin, to be raised to a supernatural level, the level of the children of God, those who are so by the grace of Christ, the grace that Christ gave to us in his uh, mystery of salvation. Salvation is then the capacity given to us to become children of God through the Son of God and to share in God's divine nature, to be eternal, to be alive for eternity with God. Salvation is all this. And we are called to uh, get that concept back and to see that very central concept in its own uh, context, which is a religious, supernatural context. But this said, uh, we are uh, also puzzled in our times by another problem which is very much attached to this uh, misunderstanding of salvation. It is, in a sense, the extension of this misunderstanding. If salvation is anything but uh, other than Christ and eternal life, why should we still profess the faith in Christ as the only savior of mankind? Are we still authorized to say that there is no salvation in any other name other than Christ? In fact, in the Acts of the Apostles, at the end of this uh, passage that we proclaimed today, we read there is no other name and uh, heaven given to men whereby we must be saved. Can we still say this? We can, as long as you do not disturb other people of other religions, because you may result as an intolerant person, fundamentalist. If you say that Christ is the savior of all men, you may be a fundamentalist, and you are not inclusive. We are called to be inclusive, respecting the dignity of all men and women of any religion. In this way, we still say Jesus is the Savior, but it is emptied of its meaning. I, are we still professing? the faith, or that faith is not only nominal, it is a sound, it is a word, but deprived of its meaning, which is misunderstood. This is the situation in which we live. But look at this contradiction. While we are very inclusive, uh, that inclusivity is not always respected. For example, in our society, in our world, we are inclusive with all religions, with all people, but we reject the babies in their mother's womb. They are of an inferior category. They, they deserve no respect at all. And we are not fundamentalists if we reject those uh, defendless babies. But we do the same with people at the end of their lives, with the euthanasia, when they are no longer useful to this society. We are not inclusive in that case. 
we can reject these people as long as they do not have any meaning for the society. But I fear that this kind of strange, faulty inclusivity is also present within the church, in uh, whom we speak about synodality, which is another way to, uh, uh, to, to say inclusivity. Synodality, where everyone has something to say. But are we really inclusive? It doesn't look like, it doesn't look so, because uh, if you think of the treatment uh, reserved to people attached to the old mass, like us, it looks like there is no inclusivity at all. These people are of another category, and they have to be even pushed outside the church. Is this inclusivity? But the inclusivity preached in the world and even within the church is this kind of inclusivity uh, pushing, in fact, Jesus outside, outside the society, outside the church. Because if we preach too much about our Lord, we run the risk of excluding other people, of neglecting in this mentality of inclusivity, the very foundation of mankind, which is humanity. In order to be humans, to still be human, we should reject Christ. The problem is Christ as the only savior, both for this society and for this, uh, for this church, the church of today for some of the church men of today. The same concept, but the problem is Christ. There is no room for him, not in the inn, but in the church. There is no room for the name of Christ to be praised, to be adored, to be professed as the only savior, and his mystical body as the only realm of salvation. Because if you say that there is a salvation outside the church, basically you mean that there is salvation outside Christ. Because the church and Christ are but one. This is the situation of salvation in this context. So my dear people, do we want to celebrate this feast in truth or just by following the narrative of the world? I suggest that we celebrate this feast in truth by adoring the name of Jesus, by uh, professing the right faith in the name of Jesus, in the mystery of Christ, in the mystery of our Mother Church, the mystical body of Christ. And uh, in order to feast uh, the name of our Lord properly, we should uh, profess this <clears throat> faith, which is not a kind of rejection of other people's sensibility or religion or belief, anything you want. It is a way to give what we have, to give what is really necessary, to give the truth, to give Christ. And if we give Christ, we have given everything. If we give ourselves, if we, instead of giving Christ, we give our own ideas, we may, we may result more interesting to this society, but we are victims of this uh, ongoing relativism where everything is relative. There is no truth except the strength to crush down those who have no voice, those who are weak, those who are irrelevant to the society. We want to love the poor. We want to love the 
those who are without strength, without uh, their social capacity to make their voice heard. We want to stand with them because we stand with the truth, with Christ, our Savior. And we do not impose this religion. We do not impose our vision. This is not an ideology. It is a fact. It is Christ, our Savior. So, my dear people, let us renew today our faith in Jesus Christ, the only Savior of the world. Let us give Christ to all people of goodwill, to all people of any religion, without any exception, without thinking to uh, offend or to exclude. Christ is the true inclusion because Christ is the only God, now and forever. Amen. In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen.